from Union Square in downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Pager Duty Summit 18. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're at Pager Duty Summit 2018 at the Western St. Francis uh, in Union Square, San Francisco. Great event, 900 people. We're excited to be here. It's our second year, and now we get to talk to some customers, which we were always excited to do. Uh, and our next guest is Alan Alderson. He is the director of IT Ops for William Hill. Great to see you. Good afternoon, it's great to be here. Absolutely, so for people that aren't familiar with William Hill, what are you guys all about? So William Hill um, offer, our, uh, offer customers um, opportunities to place bets on, on sporting events, um, presidential elections, snow at Christmas, you name it. We, we present about a million opportunities every week for, for customers to have a bet on. A um, million opportunities a week? Yeah, so uh, pick on football matches, you know, the game of the Ramble. Um, so we have um, opportunities to people to bet um, playing up to, up to the game. And then once the game kicks off, we, we transition into what's called in-play. So people can then place a bet on who's going to score the next goal. Um, and, uh, and about another 120 markets within that one game whilst the game's in play. Wow. So, um, so what's the average duration of, of, of the window to, to put a bet down? So t generally leading up to the match, it's as much time as you want. As soon as the markets are out there, we can, we can, you can place the bet before the game kicks off. Okay. Um, but once, um, once the game kicks off, you, you can write up until about towards the last few minutes of the game. You can, there'll be markets available to have a bet on. Okay, and then how many, how, what percentage is kind of things that I would, I would guess easily like sporting events or those types of things versus, you know, whether it's going to snow or not? Well, we, 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 we provide the opportunities on the website so you can have a look and, you know, it's, it's snow, on web, snow on Christmas Day is, is a popular bet and people, you know, they do their research right. um, and, they, and they like to, to have a bet on there. I love there is it. a lot of novelty bets. There used to be, you know, someone, life being found on Mars, Elvis being found, right, etc. Right. Yeah, so it's, there's a Still lot of... Still taking action on Elvis? I don't, I don't think so. No? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought we'd find him. So we're here at Pager Duty right. Summer, yep. Sum, Summit. What are you doing here at Pager Duty Summit? So we've, um, I, I've just come back from a stint in Australia, uh, working for the William Hill business over there. Um, so we introduced Pager Duty over there to help out with a, uh, uh, just getting the right message out to the right support teams quickly. Right. Um, so um, we deployed it out there and, it, and we, we just brought it in to do infrastructure to start with, but once we deployed it, it's a bit of a ripple effect. So it was like dropping a pebble into a pool, the ripple effect, and everybody, oh, they're, they're they, they seem to be doing all right over there. What are they, what are they using now for the support models and sort of those sorts of questions? And you, it, it, it was very quick how how the, the other teams decided to, um, to to latch onto Pager Duty as well. So I've since moved back to the UK. So um, I moved back in January, took on this role back in the, the Leeds office in the, the north of England. And um, one of the first things I said is, guys, start having a look at Pager Duty. We've deployed it successfully in, in, in Australia. Um, so let's have a look at what it can do for us. Um, incident management works at William Hill. So um, I'm not trying to fix anything that's broken. So it works. Um, but what we can do is increase its speed of how we deal with things. Right. So um, there's a lot of, lot of manual tasks in there that Pager Duty will come in and automate. It will take the pressure off the incident analysts because you know, if there's, a, if there's an incident at two o'clock in the morning, we are 24 by seven business. So um, if there's an incident overnight, we've, um, you know, we've got to get on it and, and start fixing, resolving the incident. And if there's one guy who's trying to call out a number of responders, um, calling out a duty manager, trying to get comms out, it's a lot of pressure on one person to do that. And, and when there's pressure, mistakes happen. Right, and right. I want, I want Page of Duty to take away then the possibility of their mistakes, take the pressure off the incident analysts so they can focus on, on resolving the incident and, and getting, getting service back to our customers as quickly as possible. Right. I'm curious when you said that other people and other groups saw Pager Duty in action, what were some of the other tasks that were not the primary tasks that you brought it in, but where, you know, where people saw value and, and are implementing it for some other, yes. other types of activities? So initially when we put it in, we put it in purely for, for servers. So for looking at the CPU disk and memory alerts. Um, and we were, we were getting our acknowledgements down from minutes to, to seconds in Australia. Um, so the other teams are watching in. Um, and within their applications, there was a lot of alerts just landing as an email and not getting actioned upon very quickly. So, um, so we brought Pager Duty in. They say, "Can this help out in this space?" And um, they started integrating it into their application. So, you know, actually through through 
through hooking it into their develop into their applications, they could get the alerts directly from PagerDuty rather than going through knocks and, and service desks, etc. So it's just a quicker response and, right. and getting onto the issue quicker. And then do you have it integrated in with some of your other development tools so it's just kind of part of that whole process or is it more kind of a standalone um, notification system? It was it was integrated straight into um, ServiceNow and PagerDuty. So it would come into PagerDuty, PagerDuty would integrate with ServiceNow, um, raise the ticket, um, and, and then, then the thing started moving. Right. Um, but the, 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 the the big win was getting the guys the call straight away as that alert happened. Otherwise, you're relying on on people watching screens, watching queues, um, waiting for that to happen, and then make the call. So if the call's gone straight to the engineer, he, he's on it immediately. Right, right, right. So what are some of your impressions here, seeing kind of the ecosystem, what's behind PagerDuty, some great keynotes earlier today, really in terms of, you know, again, the mission, it sounds like it's very much in line with what you're trying to do, which is to help teams be more effective. Yeah, and, and what I like about PagerDuty is, is their passion. It's, you just get a, you get a sense of urgency about this place and you get a sense of passion and commitment and they want to do, they want to help people out. Um, and that's what's drawn me to PagerDuty. It's, you know, the guys that I've worked with in Australia, the guys that I've worked with in the UK, they just can't do enough for you and they want to help you succeed. It's right. not, you know, you do deal with some companies that, I just want to sell you something and move on. These guys are, you know, they look after you. They they work with you and they make sure that you're getting the value out of the right. out of the product. It's a pretty interesting culture because when I talked to Jen, Jennifer Tata a couple years ago, I, I used to tease her. I'm like, nobody here knows what a pager is, right? Yeah. Nobody was born when yeah. pagers were. I had rage. One. You had one. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. one. Yeah. Shell oil upside down. I think it says hello. I can't remember. I have to yeah. check that. <laughs> um, but but you know, but it's an interesting you just kind of culture around what a pager represents, and 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 the word that they have duty in there as well, which yeah. is a very different kind of level of responsibility when you are the person with the pager on, and that yeah. seems to have really carried forward in the way that they deliver the services. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on call has people running, doesn't it? When when people, you know, when they join a job and go, oh, you might be expected to be on call, um, they run a mile. Um, they think, no, that's not for me. Um, but as we, we go down more of a DevOps transformation and we get a lot more down the, we, we call it, we own it model, um, I think it'll um, it'll change people's perceptions of, of being on call and, right. and just doing the right thing for the business. Right. Um, rather than, you know, delivering something and expecting the ops team to, to, to fix it all the time and, and call out the developers at a third line. We, we should be, we, we are heading towards being a team um, where the alerts go to the right people at the right time and we, and we get issues resolved as soon as possible. Right. I'd just love to get your take on, you know, a lot of talk about digital transformation um, and, and the modernization of IT and, and, you know, kind of expected behavior on apps. There's a lot of stuff going on. You're right in the middle of it. Massively in the middle of it. Massively yeah, yeah. in the middle of it, right? I'm sure, what percentage of your of your bets come in via mobile versus? On a digital platform, over 56%. A lot, right? So, yeah. A lot. So, and, and, and we've got, just, just said in the, that last session we had, is um, we, you know, we've got competition. So if our app isn't performing, and it isn't quick, or it's down, people will go elsewhere. They've got options, they've got choices, and they'll just go elsewhere. And the challenge is getting those customers back. We want to have a, a stack that just is available uh, and is performant, so we don't drive customers away, or we make sure that things are available at peak times. So when they are wanting a bet on you know, the Super Bowl, the Grand National, um, the, the, the three o'clock kickoffs on a Saturday afternoon in the right. UK, we can, uh, it, it's available for them and I can, people can get the bet on as quickly as possible. Right, so do you have all your own infrastructure or do you leverage public cloud? I'm just thinking as you're talking about Super Bowl and some of these other yep. big events, you must have just crazy, crazy yes, big spikes. So I was, I was, you know, we've, in the UK, it's all, um, it's all on premise. So we've got to build an infrastructure to cope with that one day of the year, which is Grand National. Um, in the US, we've just opened up in New Jersey. Um, the front end of that stack is in AWS, so we can scale. So when Super Bowl does turn around right. next um, next January, February, um, we should be able to scale with the with the load. Right. All right. And last question before I let you go: Kind of, what are your priorities next? What are some of the things that you're that you're working on with your team? Um, you know, to kind of stay stay at the at the at the leading edge of this so very going, competitive space. Yeah, we're going. Um, we're heading into AWS, so um, we're looking to um, to move into Amazon next year. Um, start migrating some applications in there, and um, we're looking to get some some applications in there at the back end of this year, but migrate the existing apps from the start of next year. Um, we're going through a DevOps transformation. We're, we're 
you know, we've been doing an agile transformation as well over the last 12 to 18 months. So there's a, a huge amount of digital transformation going on at William Hill at the moment. It's a very, very exciting place to be. Um, the US expansion, it, the, the, the place has just gone mad. You know, it's, um, there's a lot going on and right, it's, right. Uh, it's just a great place to be. Yeah, I mean, significant changes obviously in the US attitude. I think you guys are yeah. a little more progressive on yeah. that side of the Atlantic. Um, but, well, but big changes, big changes happening here. Yeah. 14th, 14th of May was a big day, you know, PASPA being repealed has, has opened up the betting opportunities right. in, in any state that wants to regulate. Right. So, um, and we are leading the way in that charge at the moment. So it's, um, it's very exciting. All right, well, I'm going to let you go so you can get some sleep because I'm sure you're a very busy man. Yeah. All right, Thank Alan, you. thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much. All right, he's Alan, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at PagerDuty Summit 2018. Thanks for watching.